All right, everybody, welcome to the live stream. We will be starting the game session very shortly. Let's give everybody a chance to join in. And uh, while we're waiting, we can uh, discuss a few updates and take a few questions. So uh, first of all, uh, welcome. And uh, yesterday we had a test session uh, with this game project. And uh, today I'm hoping to get quite a few more people in. We'll see how many people are in at this hour, uh, depending on time zones and everything. Um, so we'll see how that goes. So yesterday we had a test session uh, and we, we test played the game with a few students and it went pretty well. Um, I also have Desert Rose from the Discord channel joining me today. Desert Rose, how are you today? I'm great, thanks for asking, and how's everybody out there? I hope everyone's having a great morning. Uh, so, Rose, what did you think about the test session yesterday? How did that go? I think it went great. I tied for first place during one of the test games, but otherwise you smoked us all, so there was that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did uh, design the game, so I have a little bit of an advantage. I know where all the weapons are, and... Uh, yeah, I, I, I have a few little hidey holes that I put into that level and uh, places that are uh, hard for people to chase you into. So, so yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about your experience with the, the game session yesterday. Well, um, we had some comments about how while we're running around trying to find guns, it got a little sweaty. And so... Um, today is a little different, and definitely get some comments about what you think about what today looks like. We'd also like to hear a bit about um, the graphics and stuff, and what you guys think about some of the um, the different uh, choices for uh, for the assets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this game project is mostly based on the Unreal Engine Learning Kit Games project that was. Um, provided by Epic Games and is available in the marketplace. You can download it for free and it has a few blueprints in there. It's basically a blueprint learning tutorial project setup and uh, it comes with this little character that you're seeing on the screen here. It has some animations. It even has a blend space and a character blueprint and uh, it's a great starting point if you're trying to learn Unreal Engine for the first time. Uh, I kind of liked the art style, so I went ahead and retargeted a whole bunch of animations and imported a bunch of assets, and I used the assets in the Learning Kit Games project to create a shooter level. So uh, that's the level that we'll be in and play testing today. And uh, yeah, so that's made from all the assets. I had to export them into, um, uh, into Blender and optimize them a bit remove some of the faces that won't be seen, and uh, re completely redo the collision hulls for everything, and uh, just optimized it a bit. And uh, yeah, I took a bunch of shooter animations and retargeted them to this skeleton, which is the epic skeleton. And um, yeah, so basically this is a good example of something you could uh, take like a pr learning project, starting project, and turn it into something that uh, that you want to create. Uh, so let's see uh, how many people are joining us at the at the time being, and if there is anyone in the chat. Um, see if uh, if we have any questions yet. Yes, here we are. Uh, looks like we have quite a few people here, um, and uh, yeah, let's let's see uh, if we can. Uh, answer any Q&A before we get started. Now, before we get started, uh, it's important to keep in mind that this is not the final game project that uh, we'll be creating. This is the game project, but it's uh, the current stage of development. So there are still uh, quite a few features to be added in. Uh, we currently have uh, matchmaking and game sessions. Uh, we're using the game mode uh, rather than game mode based. That way we can use the concept of a match state. That's why you can fly around the level for a few seconds. I believe I have this configured for 45 seconds or so, or maybe a minute of the development of this project. And 
this is a way to sort of keep you students in the loop as far as the progress of the project, how far along and how close we are to uh, release of the course. And, uh, and also so you'll get uh, a little bit of a preview of what you'll be making in the course. Everything that you see in this game project that you are about to play test is what you will be creating in the course. Uh, now it's important that if you're planning on taking this Unreal Engine course, uh, that you're gonna want to at least have some uh, C++ and Unreal Engine experience. This is not exactly a beginner course. It's not an advanced course either. I'd place it somewhere in the intermediate level, maybe uh, beginner slash intermediate. Um, you'll be more than prepared if you've taken uh, at least one of my other Unreal Engine C++ courses, either the Ultimate Game Developer course or the Shooter course. Now, if you've taken the Shooter course, that's great because you've already got some experience creating a shooter game and you know how the shooter game mechanics work, how a lot of the animations uh, can be set up, the animation blueprint, anim instance. Uh, only this course will teach you how to configure it for a multiplayer game. Um, if you have no C++ experience, then you will be uh, prepared if you take uh, my Learn C++ for Game Development course. I have a couple of C++ courses. I have that one, and I have one with Game Dev TV, which is Learn, uh, which is the uh, C++ Fundamentals course. Both of those are great starting help if you've got some uh, version control experience. We don't do version control in the multiplayer course per se, but if you are version controlling your project, you're going to have a great time because if you if you get your project into a state where it no longer compiles and you have no idea what's going wrong with it, uh, if you're version controlling, you can easily revert back to a previous commit to a, to a point in time where your project was compiling and where it's working. Um, you can make a diff and see the changes between the previous build and the current build and pinpoint the uh, location of the error. I actually uh, was saved by version control while creating this project uh, a couple of weeks ago where I suddenly the package, uh, suddenly the build would not package. And, um, and you know how uh, packaging errors can be somewhat unspecific sometimes, logs can help with that, but I was able to revert back to the commit where it was packaging successfully and do a diff and find where uh, my project had gotten broken. And then I was able to uh, fix that bug and continue. And if I wasn't version controlling, I would have probably taken a lot longer to find that error or just gave up and started over, which is never a good feeling. So version control can save you. That being said, it's not a requirement for this course. Uh, let's see, Rose, do we have any questions in the Q&A, in the chat? We have a few questions. So um, right off the bat, somebody asked if they can join now. No, don't join yet. Um, there will not be a session for you to join. As you can see on the screen, he is still in the menu. Um, but we will let you know when it is time to join in. Um, we also have a few very confident people who are excited to kill you a bunch of times today. So they're coming at you. Yeah, I think I made some enemies yesterday. Um, again, I have a bit of an advantage here. I made the game and I've been playtesting this game quite a bit throughout the development. So I'm very familiar with the controls. I'm familiar with the weapons and I know where all of the all of the weapons are. So yeah, maybe in the next uh, test live stream, I will make it, uh, I will I'll add a feature so that you can know which one of them is me and maybe everyone can team up. <laughs> uh, there's also a question about whether keyboard or controller is the be best uh, Yeah, method. you're going to want to use the keyboard and mouse. Um, I currently have not configured input for controller for controllers, um, but uh, if it sounds like that's something that uh, everyone finds important, then uh, I will definitely include controller input in the course. Um, it's, it's just as simple as adding axis and action mappings in project settings in the input section uh, and just making sure that you take into account the thumbsticks and things like that. But for, for this test project, use your keyboard and mouse. There is also a battle over whether C++ is better or blueprints. Oh, yeah. I don't 
I don't think I've heard that question before. Um, just kidding. That's a very <laughs> common question. Um, and, you know, the, the answer kind of just depends on the developer. Um, some people use primarily blueprints. Some people use a mixture of the two. And some use primarily C++ with blueprints. Uh, I like to use C++ for the majority of core game mechanics because, um, well, my mind just kind of works better in C++. I, I tend to get a little nervous when the blueprints get all spaghetti -y. Um, and so I like to keep the spaghetti to a minimum. Now, it's possible with some effort to do that in blueprints as well, but I tend to like a, back, a backbone of C++ and uh, do quick and cosmetic and visual things in blueprints. Uh, however, that being said, I have done game projects all in blueprints, and it is definitely possible. And I have, I personally have never seen a uh, performance hit, but then again, when it comes to games with lots of core gameplay mechanics, I have always typically gone the C++ route. As a general rule, if your game is starting to get to look like a bowl of spaghetti, you're going to want to start thinking about introducing some C++ in there. And then there is the question that is on everyone's mind, and everybody's dying to know, when is the multiplayer course coming out? Ah, uh, yes, an ETA. Um, yeah, I'll have an ETA very soon, but you can, you can gauge the, uh, the ETA a little bit by these live streams. As you can see, uh, from the last live stream to now, uh, the game project is quite different. In fact, this is not the project we tested last one. Uh, last live stream, we tested just the menu system, and, uh, and in, in this live stream, we're actually testing the project. This is the current stage of development of the project, and you can see how much progress I've made since the last, and next live stream, uh, I'm hoping to be just about finished with the project. All that is left to do is add a few more features. Um, and those include, um, as I previously mentioned, uh, ammo reloading, uh, a bunch of effects like sounds and things like that. This, this is stuff that's sort of superficial. The core mainframe of the game is developed and complete. And I actually have uh, finished filming uh, a good deal already. So there isn't a whole lot left. Um, I will be comfortable giving you an estimated date very soon. And, uh, and yeah, this, this course will be released. Uh, I, I do not think it'll take more than uh, a month and a half, but we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll post a official ETA in the Discord channel as soon as I have uh, a closer estimate to that. Some more features, though, are going to be uh, more pickups. So you may have noticed if you were in the practice session yesterday that there were some health pickups and there will be quite a few more different types of pickups, uh, including most likely speed buffs, jump buffs. Uh, I'm most likely going to have shields, um, you know, like the, the types of shields you see in uh, most shooter games. I don't mean a big hunking piece of metal, but more like a uh, energy field that surrounds you and absorbs some damage, as well as some other things I'm thinking about uh, data collection so that you can play test your game and collect data and then you can sort of see important game metrics like parts in your map where people die the most things like that so we have a question about when can we see your face in live stream see my face in live stream yeah i was actually thinking about doing that today However, I am not an early riser, and this is a little early for me, so I'm not so sure I'd like you to see my face right now. Um, I have had some coffee, so maybe it's decent, uh, but maybe I'll show my face for the next live stream. I know it's been a while since people have seen my face. Uh, I haven't really changed much, but still, um, sometimes it's nice to get a face to the voice, so maybe next time our discussion will be uh, showing a, a bit of... Uh, something through the live uh, through the uh, webcam and we have a question I am new to the multiplayer live streams did you make that model yourself on screen I did not um, this uh, I uh, sort of mentioned a little bit earlier uh, this is from a unreal engine project called unreal learning kit games 
you can get this in the marketplace it's free and it comes with a project with all these assets here that you see in the background and uh, and some basic animations uh, so it's it's a nice little character uh, retargeting it is a little well retargeting is finicky anyway but if you plan on retargeting animations just make sure you get those base poses looking as uh, similar as possible this this uh, this guy here is he's basically a stick figure and so he's really lanky his limbs are long and pro tip if you want to retarget animations using this guy um, putting everything in a T pose is easier than putting things in an A pose because he's so straight and linear you can put him in an A in a T pose fairly easily so if you're if you're retargeting animations from say Mixamo uh, those Mixamo characters are typically in a T pose which is perfect um, if you have your base pose uh, not exact not perfect uh, with your uh, other animation skeleton uh, you can get some warping so so that's something to, to keep in mind. So Davy Scott wants to know, do you develop alone or is there a team that he can join? He devs UE Unity JavaScript and Python and he teaches that professionally. Oh, great. Um, yeah, so I'm primarily developing solo. Uh, I do have a small team here. Rose has been helping me a lot with uh, some of the administrative stuff and video editing. Um, however, um, I am currently n in need for uh, some people, but um, that's more along the lines of the artistic side. Um, I am always in need of animations, uh, particularly animations rigged to the epic skeleton are ideal, as well as I'm starting to think about looking for a effects person um, I do enjoy doing the effects myself and teaching how they work, uh, but for some of these projects, it's nice to just have a bunch of assets, dive in, and start making a game. So assets are always something that I'm in need of. So uh, if you're an artist and you do animations or effects in Unreal Engine, uh, reach out to me, um, get my contact information. You can DM me in Discord. Uh, maybe we'll talk. Uh, also, other types of art assets as well, such as logos, pictures, things like that. So, yeah. There are some questions about if the course covers things like vaulting or climbing, um, distance matching, what kind of game modes there will be, and if character selection is in the course. Yeah, so there are lots of features that a lot of people want. And for this course, um, my primary focus is teaching you how Unreal Engine multiplayer works. And that is going to involve some of those things and uh, not so much others. Um, as far as game modes, um, we're going to be playing a free-for-all match today. And I'm definitely going to include uh, more different types of matches for this course. Uh, I'm thinking... Definitely teams, probably a capture the flag or zones, uh, something like that. Um, as far as the distance matching and things like that, that may not make it into the course as there are just so many features already. This is going to be a pretty long course. Uh, it's going to be uh, filled with a lot of things to learn, and that's just with learning how the multiplayer side of things works and how to set up and properly replicate a game. Uh, so we'll see how many features can make it into this course. But if there are things that you want to learn that don't make it in, do let me know, and I'll take that into account for the next course. Also, the question um, for which one it's in, this is a UE5 course. This is a UE5 course and a UE5 project. That being said, you can follow along in any version of Unreal Engine. Uh, you could start up Unreal Engine 4 and just follow follow along just fine. Now, if there are any differences between UE5 and UE4, I definitely will make uh, a comment about that. And on the code side of things, it's basically identical. Unreal Engine 5 doesn't introduce a whole bunch of changes. There are a couple little nuances. Uh, some of the base uh, variables 
uh, in the base classes use T object pointer now, which is just uh, a wrapper that is makes things a bit more convenient for development editing. Um, but that is actually, there are only a couple of times I've actually run into any situation where I needed to do something differently. Uh, the, the core game, uh, the, the core API and code base is basically the same as well as even in the Unreal Engine editor, it's basically the same. There are, there's a few cosmetic changes and where buttons and menu items that you might have uh, seen before in one location might be a little different, may maybe in a different area. Um, but basically it's the same engine. It's kind of uh, a UI overhaul with some extra features added in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's basically just the next software update for Unreal Engine. There are some significant changes and you probably are aware of Nanite and Lumen, and uh, basically the uh, the direction Unreal Engine is going um, in the future, it it seems like there will be more of a movement towards using Niagara versus Cascade. I don't know if they'll phase Cascade out. They probably will in the distant future, but um, removing Cascade for particle systems right now would break a lot of Unreal Engine projects. So I don't think they're just going to up and remove that. Uh, that would be something to slowly migrate towards in the future. Also, typically Unreal Engine is pretty good about giving you compiler warnings about things that are going to be deprecated or are deprecated and will not work in future builds. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you're compiling and you get a warning that says um, this particular thing will not be supported in a future build, that's a good tip to tell you to change it and prepare for when Unreal Engine ultimately phases out that feature or uh, that particular thing that you're doing. Couple more quick questions before we get started because people are getting antsy. Can you use the assets in the tutorial commercially? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good question and I am going to do my I'm going to do my best to uh, show you where every asset comes from and I like to use only free assets, pre preferably commercial free, uh, or I should say royalty free. <clears throat> so um, this particular uh, character you're looking at on the screen now, again, is from the Unreal Learning Kit games. And typically anything provided by Epic is something you can use in an Unreal Engine project commercially. And that's why I like to use them. Um, and so, and same with like Mixamo animations and things like that. So I tend to use only assets that you can get for free somewhere, and I'll show you where you can get those. Of course, I'll be providing the full game project as well, but I, I'm going to show you where I got everything. That's because I want you to, first of all, know how to find free assets, and also so that you can see where those assets came from and look up any uh, user end user license uh, EULA e -U -L -A, whatever that stands for end user license agreement yeah that so you can see uh, the exact terms uh, because uh, the last thing I want you to do is go and use something you can't use commercially and then say well Steven said I could use it so um, I typically use only things you can find for free on the internet and that way uh, yeah, you can you can re reconstruct the project on your own if you didn't want to download the finished project with all its assets. Now I did, re like I said, I retargeted a bunch of animations to this skeleton, which is primarily why I'll be providing the starting project for you with all those animations. So that way you don't have to retarget everything yourself like we did in the shooter course. I think there's some confusion about yesterday's match. Steven and I both played, and he won three times, and I tied with someone else one time. I did not play as him, if that's what you guys are thinking. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I think I won the first match, and maybe another or two, I'm not sure. Um. <laughs> <laughs> he won the first and second match, and then I tied with someone, and then you won the fourth match. Okay. Well, we'll see how we do today. So 
Um, Actually, Olicron or somebody won yeah, one Olicron, of the matches. Yeah, Olicron did win one of the matches. That's right. Uh, will there be a more robust inventory system as part of this course? Uh, inventory is, it's it, it was kind of a big section in the shooter course. And um, I'm not sure how big of an inventory uh, section I want in the multiplayer course, just because um, it's it's a lot of focusing on making an inventory versus multiplayer. Now, I, I know that you do need to make sure that uh, it's integrated properly with multiplayer, but for the most part, the inventory system is uh, something that you can you can create as long as things like picking up equipping items and maintaining that item inventory data structure is uh, set up properly for multiplayer. So I'm not sure how in-depth I'll get with inventory in this course. I was thinking probably um, a sort of Halo-like uh, structure where you can have uh, a primary and secondary weapon. Um, but, you know, I'll see, I'll see how students feel um, inventory is important. So we'll, we'll see. Could you make tutorials on the chaos system and Niagara particle system in the future? Yeah, that's probably a, a very strong possibility. Yeah, and in fact, in this multiplayer course, um, I'm we are we are creating some material, uh, some effects in Niagara. As a matter of fact, um, this uh, project we're about to start here. Uh, I think we're going to start right now, pretty soon. Um, the uh, rocket launchers, actually, the, the trail for the rocket launchers is made in Niagara, and you'll learn how to do that. So, All right, so it sounds like people are ready to get started. Hopefully, we have uh, quite a few people to join. Now, I'm going to click Host. You're going to click Join. Make sure that you have your Steam region set up to US Phoenix. So if you don't, I'll show you how. You're going to open the Steam client. You're going to go to Steam and Settings and go to Downloads, and make sure this download region right here is set to US Phoenix. That way, we're all guaranteed to be in the same Steam region, and we can all join the same session. Now, um, something to keep in mind, when you join, we're all going to go to a lobby level, and we'll all be able to run around, and as soon as eight people join, will all transition into the match. Now, there is no cap for the number of players who can join. So as soon as eight people join, the match will start, but all the other people who join will jump into that game in progress. So we should all start at the same time in the game, and you'll be able to fly around during the warm-up time and in the uh, warm-up game mode match state. So uh, that's what you're going to see. Uh, if you don't spawn in the level without a gun, that lobby level, uh, then that means eight people have already joined. You're the ninth plus, and you will be uh, in the cool uh, the warm up phase, ready to start. While we're in the match, um, we'll be playing, so we won't be able to follow the chat. So any questions that you have, put off until the end of the match. Also, you can use <laughs> the live stream to figure out where Steven is, so we can gang up on him. <laughs> Thanks for that. All right. <laughs> so uh, if everyone's ready, uh, I'm going to host this game session. And as soon as I click host, you're going to click join. Rose is going to jump over to another machine where she has the game up and running. And um, if you do want to, uh, if you do want me to show or to see your uh, questions, uh, go ahead and post them. And uh, I mean, I won't be reading as we'll be playing, but post them in the chat for YouTube or for the live in the live streams channel on Discord. OK, so if everyone is ready, I'm going to go ahead and click host. And now I'm here in the lobby and you can now go ahead and click join and I'll see you in the game. All right, looks like we, we got a few people, and uh, you probably don't see names above people's heads. Uh, that's something I'll likely add so that uh, other people can see names. Looks like we've already got eight plus people, so we are now in the warm up stage of the match. So the match has started. We're in the warm up stage. Uh, the game mode has match states, 
And as soon as this countdown timer is finished, we will go into the in progress game mode match state, at which point we will spawn characters and our controllers will possess them and we will be able to run around and do battle. So we have about 15 seconds left before the match starts. While you're in this warm up stage, you can use WASD and the mouse to fly around. Um, you can also use the E and C keys to go up or down, and also spacebar lifts you up. Okay, so the match has started, and we are all starting with weapons, as you can see. And uh, there are other weapons scattered throughout the, the uh, level as well. I'm going to do my best to play and talk at the same time. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you do want to look at where I am currently you can look at the YouTube live stream uh, and see my screen and that'll tell you which player is me. Uh, so that way, if you do want to gang up on me, you can do that. Oh, my first defeat. Um, so you can't see who, cur who currently defeated you, uh, but that will definitely be uh, one of the features coming up um, in one of the next live streams. I'm hoping to get that feature in. It'll definitely be in the, uh, in the course. Um, usually in shooter games, uh, you'll see um, who elimed who or who killed who. Um, basically, oh, sorry, person who just spawned. I, I know that was me. Um, you'll basically get to see a, a something displayed on all users' screens um, that says uh, someone was eliminated and the person who eliminated them. Another thing I'd like to do is streaks, um, sort of little mini in game achievements. Uh, like uh, kill streaks. So if you've eliminated, say, five people in a row without dying, then you have a streak, and it'll keep track of people who are on a streak. And then, of course, if you eliminate someone who is on a streak, then that would be uh, a sort of achievement in itself. Um, so, so things like that. Also, double kills, double elims. Uh, I'm sort of I'm I'm tending to uh, stay away from. Um, words like death and kill in this project uh, because uh, well for no particular reason the, the next course will probably use those words but um, it'll be like a double elim sort of achievement something like that um, and and triple and quad and things like that so that way you can know uh, how well you're doing and uh, whoop, my second defeat and and yeah so so things like that will definitely be introduced um, scoreboard is is a, a very uh, likely possibility as well. I'd like to show uh, who's in the, the lead at any given point in time. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, probably a way to visually see on the screen uh, which player is in the lead. So that way, if uh, you know you want to end their kill streak or whatever, then you can do that. Um, so that's that's another thing. Uh, but I'd like to have a scoreboard menu. So if you say hit Q or the escape key, then I'd like for a scoreboard to pop up and show uh, everyone's name and their score. So it looks like there's just a couple people standing there. I went ahead and uh, took care of respawning them again. So yeah, it looks like uh, we have 19 players in the game currently. Um, you, you can't see that, but uh, in on the server side, uh, since I'm hosting, I have a debug message printed at the top left just above my health bar. So if you're watching this in the live stream, you can see the number of players in the game currently, and we have 19. So uh, not sure where everyone is right now. Oh, there they are. Uh, and of course, there are our health pickups and things. Now, again, I, as I mentioned, I, I, I designed this game so I know how to get to all the little areas. But if you watch this live stream later, you'll see how I get to some of the hard to reach areas. Uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of add ways to get to some of the uh, areas that are high and seemingly out of reach. Um, if you uh, didn't know, there's uh, one of these pillars here in the main room with the altar. Uh, it's sort of leaning on its side here. You can run up the side of that. And so that's how you can get up to these perches up here. Ooh, someone is trying to rocket launcher me. And of course I die. All right. So 
So on my end of things, it's looking like uh, performance is looking pretty good. Uh, with 19 players in the game, it's handling it, it seems like no problem. Now, of course, uh, some people might have less of a good internet connection. Uh, so if you're lagging out, um, it could be the internet connection. You can always check your frames per second to see if it's the actual game that's slow or your internet connection that's slow. Um, it looks like I'm having a, a, getting a pretty good FPS at, at, the, at the moment. Um, so uh, that's something you can do. You can also run the console command stat FPS to see frames per second and stat net to see uh, network stats. Um, as with all fast paced competitive multiplayer games, you're going to have a better internet connection if you're using a wired connection rather than Wi-Fi. So if you have a router set up and you have an Ethernet cable that you can hook up to your computer, hook your computer up to your router, you're going to see a better performance. And that goes for all multiplayer games. Um, most uh, hardcore gamers will tend to have their computer set up uh, to, with a wired internet connection rather than using uh, wireless Wi-Fi. So if you're not doing that currently for future streams, um, I recommend setting up uh, not wireless, but uh, connection with an Ethernet cable at least. Oh, and I just got rocketed. That's my fifth defeat. Um, yeah, I really would like to see who's in the lead right now. And uh, yeah, and when I introduce uh, more game modes, um, there'll be... Uh, more more features as well um, I'd like to do teams where uh, one team is like you know red and the other team is blue probably just change the material uh oh someone has a negative two sorry gang alright so um, I'm also interested in feedback on how you guys feel the game is designed, particularly how do you like the weapons? How do you like this default weapon that you're starting with now? Um, it's a, a bit slower firing, um, but it does a bit more damage than the automatic rifle. The automatic deals 20 damage per bullet, and of course, headshots will be introduced. Ooh, I just got a limbed. Uh, there will be headshots which will do more damage. That's not currently implemented in this build. Um, but regular uh, bullets from the automatic assault rifle, uh, they deal 20 damage apiece and you fire pretty quickly. And the default rifle that you're starting with now is it fires more slowly. You can hold the mouse button down. Wow, look at all these guns. You can hold the right, uh, the left mouse button down to automatic fire, but the fire rate is pretty slow, uh, so it's it's not as fast. But it does 35 damage per hit rather than 20, so three shots will take someone out, which is why I'm doing uh, quite well with the default weapon that you spawn with. Uh, that being said, uh, I do like the automatic assault rifle. Uh, it it fires quite quite quickly. In fact, it fires more quickly than the net update, um, and there, you, you know, that might be something that confuses you a little because if you can only update uh, from the net, the, from the network, if variables can only be replicated so fast, how can you shoot the weapon faster than that and still be accurate? And I teach you how to do that in the course. Ouch. That was my ninth defeat. So yeah, that's that's a, a challenge for shooter games. Um, is often you might uh, you might want your weapon to fire very quickly, and the naive approach to shooter games when you're programming them for multiplayer is to simply uh, call an RPC, you know, a replicated function that sends a message to the server and says, "Hey, I'm pressing the fire button." fire a bullet and then the server says okay and then spawns the bullet and then that replication uh, reaches all the clients and all the clients see the bullet get spawned on their screen and depending on the round trip time or the time it takes for that data to reach the server and then get back to all clients 
that can be as high as 100 milliseconds or even more depending on people's internet speed. And that means it, with the naive approach, you can only spawn a bullet that often. Otherwise, on your machine, you might see a lot of bullets, but on everyone else's machine, you won't see as many. However, um, the automatic assault rifle in this game spawns weapons, uh, spawns bullets very quickly, much faster than 100 milliseconds. Um, and so that's, that's an interesting problem to get around. Uh, how do you do that and how do you still um, hit people? Wow, okay. And I teach you how to do that in the course. Wow, okay, so I had a, a 48 limbs, 11 defeats, and Panda Labs beat me. So congratulations, Panda Labs. You are first place. Okay, okay. So we Sonic Squad. Okay, let's see. We had a fatal error that crashed. We had somebody who could not find a game hosting. Okay, so if you can't find a game, uh, if you can't join, um, make sure you have Steam running and set to US Phoenix as the download region. And uh, if, you, if you still can't join, close the game project and reopen it and try again. Also, make sure that you've downloaded the most recent project that's on the link. The link should be in the description for this video. Um, this is not the same project as our test run yesterday. This is a new one. So make sure you download the most recent one. Sonic Squad, looks like you got a crash. If you could, uh, in your game project folder, search for .log and find the log. If you could send me a direct message in Discord with that log, uh, I'd like to see that so I can take a look at that crash report. Um, if you can, close the game and restart. And, uh, and and try to hit join again. Also, there are people who are not getting the limbs. Okay, uh, that's that's an issue as well. Um, go ahead and give me, send me a DM if you're getting anything, um, if anything seems buggy, if you're not getting a limb counts, things like that. Um, I I would like to uh, look into that. That's definitely a problem. So. Uh, also, if you did leave the game, you can always join again by clicking join. You can, um, if for some reason it's not letting you join back again, try to uh, close and reopen the project. I'm going to switch to the automatic rifle here. Uh, we still have 13 players in game. If you can't rejoin, do let me know in Discord. Uh, and I, I do want to know about any important... Uh, things that you see or things that are not working. If you get a crash, please let me know and send me your crash log, your, your game log. Um, and yeah, if you can't join, do let me know. Yeah, so yesterday in the test run, uh, what I did was I had everyone start off. Ooh, I just blew up. Uh, everyone started off without a weapon. And then you had to run and find one in the world and whenever you pick up a weapon, you drop your current weapon. And of course, when you die, you drop your current weapon. So that meant that all of the weapons started to accumulate in the hot spots where people were dying a lot. And that meant if you wanted a weapon, you had to run into those hot spots. So that was very challenging as soon as you died. Uh, you respawned with no weapon, and then you start, you found yourself running into the hot spots looking for a weapon where everyone already has weapons, rocket launchers and things, and so that made it very difficult. So I decided to add a default weapon and spawn everybody with the weapon, and I wanted it to be a sort of weaker weapon, but it turns out I actually kind of like this weapon the most. Um, of course, it's not a rocket launcher, and it doesn't fire as quickly as the assault rifle, but it does, it does do pretty decently. Another thing was, yesterday I felt the rocket launchers were a bit overpowered, and uh, primarily because you couldn't damage yourself. Now you can, so I enabled self-damage with the rocket launcher. Um, that way, if you shoot the wall next to you and you're too close to that, you will, you will receive quite a bit of damage and you can destroy yourself. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a little bit of an adjustment I made. Before it was just way too overpowered. You could, 
get close to someone and shoot the ground and they would die and you would su survive there i just saw someone blow themselves up so so yeah just be careful with those rocket launchers you can in fact hurt yourself looks like we're back up to 15 players in the game so that's great and again on my end i'm seeing a pretty good performance i haven't seen anybody lagging out or acting too choppy everyone seems pretty smooth um mechanics feel good and it's a pretty good number of players for this size of a, of a map um i made the map pretty big so uh, i I sort of looked at games like Destiny and Halo for these sort of types of uh, matchmaking, uh, deathmatch style games, and um, and sort of modeled this level with those games in mind. And uh, that way, um, there I hope I hope that there would be enough room to uh, not be bombarded by other players in a free for all match, but also uh, the the level not be so big as to never finding anyone. And so it looks like every time I respawn, I'm seeing somebody uh, <clears throat> every few seconds. Okay, so it looks like I have uh, run into an issue where I'm not respawning. So uh, we'll see if at the end of this game, uh, the restart timer kick kicks in and we all start in, in the next game. I'm not going to I'm not going to kick everyone. I'm just going to stay here and let the match play out. Looks like we have five minutes left. So while I'm waiting, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, chat and see if we got any other issues or any other questions. So I'll just uh, stay here for a moment. Uh, another thing that I've uh, also realized is because we're all spawning in with a new weapon, uh, these weapons are going to accumulate and they are replicated. So that's something I'm probably going to do is start destroying those default weapons along with someone uh, getting eliminated. All right. All right, let's take a look at the chat here. Joining in, looking at the chat. Uh, Sonic Squad, the logs. Uh, the logs you can find uh, in, if you open up the Windows folder that contains the executable, say you're in Windows Explorer, to, uh, click on the search bar and type dot log enter and it'll show you all the files that end with dot log and there should be a blaster dot log. Go ahead and send me that. Yes, Gordon. Uh, yeah, I realized that yesterday, and there were quite a few uh, things that I wanted to tweak, and I I tweaked, you know, adding the default weapon and things. But that's another thing: is if you're firing the weapon and the game uh, ends, then uh, you'll be stuck in fire mode. So that that can be something uh, that can be a little annoying. So I'll definitely be adding a, a quick fix for that. Uh, by the next live stream as well. Uh, yes, Ismail, you're going to see Space Wars. Um, uh, yeah, so this game is using the Space Wars dev app ID, and that's the dev app ID you can use for free with Steam. So if you haven't registered your game with Steam and you'd still like to use Steam then uh, for your multiplayer game sessions, then you can if you use the Space War dev app ID. Now this game is going to be available on Steam and uh, people can uh, play it and download it through Steam uh, as a actual legit Steam game. And at that point, my uh, this particular game, the official game, will have its own dev app ID. But the project itself is using 480, that's dev app ID for Steam, and that's the one that you can use while you're uh, clicking the course and following along. And it's going to show up as Space War in Steam, so it's going to show if you have other friends in Steam, they're going to see that you're online and playing Space War when you're playing this game. So. That's just a uh, sort of side effect of using the dev app ID 480. 
Um, yeah, so in the live streams Discord, uh, Bjerg just says uh, he needs to get in gear and finish the shooter course before this comes out. Yeah, good idea. Um, and if you don't finish by the time the multiplayer shooter, the multiplayer course comes out, that's totally fine. Um, you can you can easily you know come back to it later. Uh, you by no means do you have to finish the shooter course to start this course. It's not a prerequisite. It's just uh, going to help you get uh, prepared for it. You're going to be uh, creating some shooter mechanics, and uh, it's it's just a good jump start. Um, this game is going to have uh, a little, just a little bit more in depth with uh, the shooter mechanics, particular to multiplayer. Uh, in the shooter course, we have hit scan weapons, which means when you fire the weapon, it performs a line trace, and you have an instant hit. Uh, in this particular uh, project we're playtesting right now, these weapons are projectile weapons. So they actually spawn a projectile, and that projectile flies through the world very quickly and it's even affected by gravity. And the multiplayer course is going to cover both hit scan and projectile weapons because it's important to show how those work in multiplayer. Uh, so uh, even the uh, fast shooting automatic assault rifle that you see someone firing right now, uh, that is also a projectile weapon. So lots of projectiles being spawned. Uh, and of course, the, the starting default weapon and the rocket launcher are both projectile weapons. And uh, interesting fact, um, there is a projectile weapon C++ class, and the rocket launcher, the starting default weapon, and the automatic assault rifle are simply blueprints with that projectile weapon C++ class parented to them. And then everything uh, cosmetic is set uh, in that blueprint and there's no blueprint logic you just create a new uh, weapon blueprint based on the projectile weapon and you can configure its fire rate whether or not it's automatic and set its projectile class and things like that uh klatu barda nikto great job getting first place i need to show the first place players limbs that will be something uh, that i would like to see all right, so it looks like we are ready to start the next session. Uh, we currently have nine players in the game. So uh, if uh, anyone is watching right now, you can join the game. Uh, you can download the game project with the link in the description for this video. You can also get the link in Discord. And uh, you can download, extract that project, make sure you have Steam running in the background, and set the download region to US Phoenix, and you can launch the game and hit join and you can join us in progress sonic squad wants to know how to find the log oh. i showed him oh okay good uh thanks theodore um yeah if uh if you run into any issues like shots not being registered let me know um this uh this could be affected by a number of factors Ooh, someone just took me out uh, it could be uh, a number of factors. It could be the, the internet connection. Um, and also, it, it really does depend on how far away we are in the world. Um, we are using the Steam region, US Phoenix. Um, but if you're pretty far away from that, um, there could be a lot higher uh, ping for you. There could be um, a, high, uh, a larger amount of time that it takes for the data to travel across the network from your machine to mine and back. And that's the primary reason that Steam uses these Steam regions is because it likes to take a lot of people around the world who are playing a given game and it groups them up into regions. So that way uh, you can connect to the server that's closest or that's in that region, which is closest to you. And, and that way um, the data has a shorter distance to travel across the network and then you'll you'll get a better network performance so if we're all you know i assume that we're all in various regions of the world right now playing this game and we're all connected to the steam region us phoenix so if you are say in japan or on the other side of the world and you're connecting to us phoenix um, you are connected to, to the server that i'm connected to but i'm much closer so 
uh, the round trip time for you is longer than it is for me. And when I say round trip time, I just mean the amount of time it takes for you to click the fire button and for that data to reach the server that this game is hosted on and register that and then replicate it to all clients. So um, for me, uh, obviously I'm the host, so uh, I have the advantage in that I don't have that lag time. When I fire the weapon, I am the server. So the projectile gets spawned directly on my machine and then it only takes half the round trip time for that data to reach your machine. And uh, so basically in all uh, listen server games, the host has a little bit of an advantage. And that's why for uh, competitive games where you have tournaments and money is involved, typically the games are hosted by dedicated servers where everyone links up to the same hosting server and dedicated servers don't have a game, uh, don't have a player uh, playing on that machine. In fact, the game isn't even rendered to the screen. That machine is simply dedicated to handling the, the game simulation and being the authority for everything that's happening in the game. And that way, everything is fair. Everyone is uh, connected to the same machine. No one has an advantage, except in that uh, if you have for instance, uh, a faster internet connection, or you're closer to the server, um, you know, there's always going to be a differential in advantage that way. But uh, there's no, you know, no instance where the, the server has, the sh server machine has a player playing on it. Uh, but for the most part, though, um, it's not going to be that noticeable. In fact, you saw last game, uh, I didn't even win. Uh, the last two games actually um, and that first game I had 32 kills and I still wasn't the winner um, so it, you know the uh, as long as you have a decent internet connection you're gonna have a uh, pretty good performance and you're not really gonna see uh, that big of you're not gonna notice that big of a difference okay so we got six minutes left uh, seems to be working okay again if you have any issues if you get kicked for any reason, your game crashes, or uh, something stops working, uh, do let me know. Uh, you can you can uh, either post in Discord or in the chat, or just send me a direct message. Uh, wow, that person just dropped in and started bombing me. Um, but yeah, I do this. This is a testing session, so um, I would like to know about any issues. That's that's the primary reason for this also you know to give you sort of a preview um, but um, yes I, I am uh, testing this and looking for bugs uh, as this is the current uh, development build so um, do let me know if you run into any issues and again if you want to gang up on me take a look at the uh, at the live stream and you can see where I am right now um, this game the level is relatively symmetrical so um, you know you're gonna need to know if I'm on the left or right side um, but it's it's uh, pretty easy to get to know this level fairly quickly and know where everything is and how to get to uh, all the hard to reach spots um, and of course if you watch this live stream and watch my gameplay you can see I'm showing you how to get to some of these areas um, that you can reach that that seem uh, possibly unreachable uh, those perches up there are nice because they have health pickups and uh, if you um, get up there and you don't get the health pickup you kind of save it then when someone shoots you then you can just back up into the health pickup and then uh, kill them so that's kind of nice there are a couple of other um, little little secrets. They're not really secrets. You got these uh, these holes here. You can't reach them from the bottom, but you can drop in from the top. So that's good to know. Um, and uh, I'll show you how to get to that. You just kind of come in here. I'm on the right wing of the level currently. Oh, I didn't make it. Somebody took me out. Um, but yeah, there's if you take a right right there where I was, um, you can drop in and then you get to the lower level. Uh, also, you can uh, climb 
uh, up around these the edges of this room that I'm currently that I currently died in um, there's there's a way to get to those pickups and weapons up there also the perk is um, on the left wing well it depends on left and right depends on which direction you're facing if I'm uh, facing the, the basically the entrance to the level then it's the right wing uh, but there's a secret way to get to those perches up there um, where initially rocket launchers start off um, so that's where you can find the rocket launchers those perches uh, I'll show you where what I mean um, it's kind of I guess difficult to, to figure that out from my description I have to kind of show you so out here in the courtyard um, I can go up and then there are these perches up there there's someone shooting up oh, someone just came in from behind them and then I killed them both uh, but you can get up to that perch right there by, oops, oh, oh, if I survive long enough okay by <laughs> by going in taking a right and you can get up through this little area here and then of course there's usually a rocket launcher uh, let's see if I can uh, pick it up um, if you can't pick up a weapon because there are like three piled on uh, when you swap weapons you throw your current weapon and uh, if you're if you're running then it'll it'll sort of launch the weapon so if you have some velocity and you swap weapons then your currently equipped weapon will be thrown so uh, yeah um, <clears throat> so there are just a few little things like that in this game uh, little secrets I wanted to have some secret passageways um, but I didn't want to make this level too intricate and I wanted everything to be relatively easy to access so. oh I just got blown up yeah that's the thing about those perches is they're nice to to perch and shoot people from but if someone has a rocket launcher they will just take you out they you're there isn't really anywhere to hide um, also, by the way, you can aim with the right mouse button. So if you didn't know, you can aim, you'll get a little bit of a zoom in. Uh, the crosshairs will shrink a little bit. And so that can, that can help a little bit too. Now, another thing to take note of, um, obviously the rocket launcher projectile travels slower than the automatic rifle. Uh, the automatic rifle bullets travel faster than the starting default weapon bullets. Um, not much faster, but, um, it takes a little bit longer for those default weapon bullets to travel through the air and get to the target. Uh, the automatic weapon is faster, so that's a, probably another advantage, which is why I didn't want to start everyone off with those weapons, as they are a little bit better. Yeah, there are lots of default weapons lying around, and I can imagine with longer game sessions, that's going to pile up quite a bit. So I'm thinking that I should probably start destroying those default weapons um, when someone dies, uh, or at least start uh, a destroy timer on those weapons. All right, and I'm the winner. All right, cool. Uh, I really want to see the scores, though. I'm sure that you guys were pretty close. Um, uh, yeah, game diagnostics would be great. You can also type the console command stat net. Um, and as you can see, I'm stuck in fire mode. Uh, so that's something I uh, need to uh, create a function to, to disable firing as soon as the game ends. All we're doing is transitioning into uh, a custom match state that I created in the game mode for, um, for the cooldown. I called it match state cooldown. And as soon as we transition into the match state cooldown, uh, then I just disable input, which means that as soon as you release the left mouse button, uh, since input is disabled, that input doesn't make it, and then you're stuck in fire mode. So there's that. So yeah, that's the little uh, secret hidey hole I was trying to show you, but I just kept dying. And then of course, there's that one. Now, these little ledges that you can jump up to reach that perch are not on the right side. So that's kind of an asymmetry that maybe I should eliminate. Maybe there should be a way to get up to both perches. We'll see. I'm going to grab one of the automatic assault rifle weapons. And let's, uh, let's see how this game uh, works. I think we'll have this one more match before we wrap it up. Uh, so make this one count. 
Yeah, the automatic is pretty deadly. Uh, I'd say it's probably not as deadly as the rocket launcher. Um, I am definitely going to have sniper rifles and shotguns. So, yeah, more weapon types are coming. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, the, the different weapon types are just sort of so different from each other uh, that I think it's important to cover them all. Um, the different weapon types I'm referring to being, um, obviously, we have uh, semi-automatic or semi-semi-automatic. Hold the mouse down and still fire. That's the default weapon. There's the automatic rifle. That's what I'm currently using. Obviously, the rocket launcher. And then uh, there will be sniper, a sniper rifle with a high-powered zoom-in scope. And um, that's going to be good for, obviously, sniping. The shotgun uh, is another another weapon that is different enough to you know be covered in its own right. Uh, the shotgun is going to be a hit scan weapon. It's going to be a close range weapon with a big scatter or a relatively big scatter. Um, so basically, you'll be able to fire a weapon, and it will have multiple hit scan uh, line traces um, that sort of fire out in a randomized cone uh, that has a spread so that way if you're close to someone you'll hit them with more line traces and do more damage and if you're farther away then more of those uh, line traces will miss and you won't do as much so shotguns obviously you're going to need to cock the shotgun every time you shoot it so yeah there are some differences and I think uh, shotguns are super fun so it's good to cover those um, so that's another, so snipers and shotguns, and I would like to have grenades as well. Uh, I think grenades are important, and they are also sort of a, a unique type of weapon in that um, you throw them and then they bounce around. So they have physics enabled, and then they have a timer associated with them, and at the end of that timer they blow up. So grenades. Um, another thing that might be fun, uh, also grenade launchers on that note. But another thing that might be fun is a homing missile. So the projectile movement component class, uh, which is what I'm using for these projectile bullets and for the uh, rocket launcher rockets, um, the projectile movement component has the option to be a homing missile, which means you just give it a target actor and it homes in on that actor. So uh, homing missiles might be fun and they're relatively easy to set up as well. You just kind of get the target, most likely from the line trace, for uh, you know from the uh, from the uh, I'm tr I'm tr trying to think of the word for the crosshairs, the crosshairs screen location in World Space. You basically trace from that, and if you're hitting a player, then you can lock on to that player. And so a homing missile might be fun. Oh, and I just got in limb. So yeah, this is this is a ton of fun. Oh, oh, oh. There we go. Yeah, this is a ton of fun. I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with the performance and also um, how this level is is panning out with lots of players in game. Uh, so that's fun. Um, there might be some adjustments made uh, to the level, of course. Uh, by the time uh, the final project and course is completed and released. Um, and of course, as I uh, add more weapon types and more pickup types, um, you know, the, the game is going to take on a different dynamic as well. Um, so yeah, and also, you know, there are some design decisions to be made, like how many of each type of weapon should be in the level. Um, I thought about having respawn to, uh, weapons rather than a fixed number of weapons. Obviously, we have starting weapons, and those are accumulating, so obviously I'm going to fix that. But um, as far as the non-starting weapons, the machine guns and rocket launchers, there's a finite number of them. And um, so I believe it's 20 or so automatic weapons. And then I think there are four or six rocket launchers total. 
in the world. So, uh, you know, that's a design decision. Um, what I was thinking about for this level is to, at least for the free-for-all game mode, to have like two rocket launchers, maybe one sniper rifle, uh, four shotguns or so, a few SMGs, uh, maybe respawning grenades, since those get consumed, right? They get destroyed as soon as you're done with them. And, uh, and then a whole bunch of automatic assault rifles. And of course, everyone starts with a default weapon. So, so yeah, that's that's something to to think about. But that was that those were my thoughts for um, the current uh, design plan for this course for this for this game. Ooh, I thought I was gonna blow myself up there. All right, and I'll take a look at the uh, chat and questions uh, at the end of this game as well. And, uh, yeah, this is looking good. Uh, obviously, you, you've seen that if you jump around, you're a lot harder to hit. So that's something to to keep in mind. Obviously, I learned, I learned that from just playing a lot of shooter games. And by the way... Um, I, I have a lot of experience playing shooter games, so that's kind of one reason why I'm so good at this game. Also, I made the game, but um, yeah, I, I'm not a beginner to shooter games, so. Yeah, um, and if there were like a fewer packet losses yesterday, it was likely because of the number of players in the game. Uh, I believe we were playing with around eight people at any given time on average. Uh, we started with about 19. It, it seems like we still have 11 people. Um, if anyone is unable to join, do let me know. I uh, assume that some people are, are just kind of, uh, you know, have to get off and, and do other things. We've been playing for quite a while at this point. Um, so, but, yeah, if, if people aren't rejoining because they can't, I definitely want to know about that uh, and of course there you know packet loss is another thing uh, I also this is of course the game prototype so I haven't gotten to the optimization step yet there are a, a few optimization techniques that you can uh, make use of when creating multiplayer games and uh, and those are definitely things that will be covered in the course um, because they're they're very important especially with a a game like this where you plan on having like more than two players and you're going to be doing lots of things at runtime like spawning a bunch of bullets and you know eliminating people there are hit events all over the place there are overlap events all over the place and there's lots of information replicated um, from the server and uh, sent to the server so um yeah, this this that we're playing, this game we're playing right now is pre-optimization. It's it hasn't been optimized yet, um, but there are things you can do. Like you can disable replication for actors and then enable replication uh, as soon as you're ready to. Uh, you can uh, turn the net update frequency down, uh, and uh, it, you know make optimizations so that you're not uh, replicating when you don't have to. Uh, Obviously, replicated variables, well, I guess it's not obvious. Replicated variables are not constantly sending packets uh, when they don't change. So if you mark a variable as replicated, it's actually not uh, sending any information across the network uh, unless it's changing. It replicates as soon as it's changed. However, the server still has that variable marked as replicated, which means every server frame or every update it's checking to see if that value has changed and that can take up performance on the server side um, but if it's not marked to replicate currently then you can sort of uh, eliminate the need to check that variable and that can uh, save on some performance on the server there's a really good epic games um, live stream talking about optimizations Okay, great. Um, great job, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate everyone's participation. I'm going to go ahead and end the session. 
And uh, we'll have another live stream again very soon. Uh, so um, if you want to exit the game gracefully, please don't hard exit the game. Just hit the escape key and click return to lobby. And then you'll see your character sort of beam up into that elimination bot. And then you'll get back to this screen where you can hit quit. So I just kicked everybody. And uh, it looks like we had uh, a few pretty fun and successful games for the most part. I'm sorry if you got kicked or if you got a crash or any problems, anything like that. Do let me know if you get cr a crash or if you get kicked. I do want to know about that. You can send me a DM through Discord. Um, so, yeah, awesome job, everybody. Uh, congratulations to those who won matches. And uh, I had a ton of fun. Now, if there are any last-minute Q&A items, uh, we can answer a few questions before wrapping up this live stream. Yeah, so um, uh, no, Nopesat Racing said spawn points are one issue because you spawn right next to each other. So the game should check that there is some distance between players when spawning. Uh, yes, I am not currently checking distance when spawning. Uh, the way it's currently set up is that the game mode uh, just picks a random spawn point. So whether or not there are 10 people surrounding that area or not, you will respawn there. So that's, um, that's not fun if you're spawning into a battle zone. Uh, however, I did pick the spawn points in places where... Uh, hot spots are less likely likely to occur, but that's not guaranteed. So, uh, yeah, that's a good idea to do a distance check. That's a relatively simple function to create. Yeah, and uh, if you didn't have shots registering, um, do do let me know if you have any like game breaking issues. Um, but uh, that could be due to um, it could be packet loss. Uh, again, with the automatic r rifle. Um, the uh, th the update for your uh, for your hit is unreliable because it's marked it's a server RPC marked as unreliable. Um, that being said, uh, it is reliable uh, when you are clicking or unclicking the mouse button. So if your mouse button is pressed or released, that information reliably hits the server. But updating the actual aim location is unreliable. So, um, and that's just something that you do. If you do something frequently, like fire a weapon 100 times per second, you don't want to send a reliable RPC to the server because you'll overflow the queue for reliable RPCs. You instead send them as unreliable, and that way if they get dropped, they won't be resent and they won't uh, get any confirmation. Olicron asks, what kind of things need to be replicated in order for this to work? Um, yeah, that's the thing about multiplayer games is it's all about figuring out what you can re what you need to replicate and not replicating anything that you don't need to. And the interesting thing is that uh, there are some things that need to be replicated and some things that actually don't. Uh, take the animations, for example. Most of the things that you're seeing other people doing as far as animations are concerned, um, they're done locally based on data that's derived from the character that uh, that is being driven through um, replicated values. Okay, so for example, let me give you an example. Uh, your velocity, okay? Your character has a velocity, and locally you can get that velocity. So your animation blueprint can, for example, your run blend space, your idle walk run, if your velocity is zero, then your blend space will be at zero and you'll be idling. If your velocity increases, then your blend space will increase and you will go into a running animation. Uh, so because that movement is already replicated, you don't need to set up replication for your for your velocity. Now for, for aiming, on the other hand, if you right click and you lift the weapon to aim, uh, then all clients are not going to know that you're aiming. So you're going to want to replicate that down to all clients. So as soon as those clients have that variable updated, then they can locally on that animation blueprint um, play the uh, aiming animation, for example. 
so um, so there are certain things um, for, for this to work um, aiming uh, when when you're pressing uh, the fire button and releasing the fire button um, your uh, when you aim um, there is a line trace being made and it's being made to from the crosshairs world position outward and whatever it hits in the world there's an f vector location for that hit target and that is used when spawning projectiles it's used as a sort of orientation when you spawn a projectile and set its orientation you set it to the direction of that line trace and so in order to spawn a projectile accurately uh, the server needs to know that hit location so that is replicated and that is replicated uh, using a uh, serialized f vector called f vector underscore net quantize so this is a special type of f vector that is used for replication it's uh, truncated as far as its accuracy goes so a regular f vector is three floats an x y and z right but an f vector net quantize has zero decimals of precision they're basically integers now you would think that that makes your uh, hit location inaccurate but in reality it's actually very accurate because a regular f vector for a location in the world when you take off the trailing digits it's only off by plus or minus one unreal engine unit which is a centimeter so if you're aiming at something that's 50 yards away and you replicate that hit location to the server the server is going to have that same hit location now if you were replicating in uh, on the other hand the rotation orientation of your projectile well then if you truncate that then you're going to have a different a, a radically different rotation so it's important to choose wisely which properties you replicate um okay any other questions so there have been several people who commented that they were shooting and not causing any damage that also happened to me okay um someone said that after they ran through a spawn point it started doing damage to them again they ran through a spawn point uh do you mean spawn point as in the place where people spawn or like the spawn point for a, a health pickup or something like that um yeah do send me a dm guys if you get any issues like that um so yeah um that's that's something i'll be looking into it sounds like at some point if if people were not doing damage it could be packet loss it could be due to a high flow of traffic also keep in mind i'm doing a youtube live stream and hosting the game so i am the server responsible for replicating to and from clients and um i'm also live streaming so the live stream is taking up a percentage of my bandwidth as well as rose is hooked up to the same uh, uh router as well so sh so she was taking up some bandwidth also so um so there was a lot of network traffic on my end of things um so that could ultimately affect how much data could be transmitted and how many packets were lost um and of course when there are lots of players joining everyone's replicating information to and from me as i am the host i am the server for the game uh, so that can also affect things as well so keep that in mind will everything use the default movement component or will you also look into extending it and support multiplayer at the same time uh, if you're talking about the character movement component uh, this project this uh, project is currently using the default character movement component um, but it's possible that we may may extend that into a custom character movement component yeah sure all right so uh let's see any other questions uh okay so i think that's pretty much it for this live stream uh once again i really appreciate you guys joining and the participation has been awesome we're gonna have another live stream and a game session here pretty soon um, probably within the next two weeks or so and i'll be announcing that in the discord if you're watching this on youtube and you're not in the discord you can join with in uh, with the link in the description below if you haven't gotten my other uh, unreal engine 
or C++ courses on Udemy, I have new coupons in the description for this video. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. And if you want to prepare for this Unreal Engine multiplayer course and you want to be ready, go ahead and take uh, one of my other courses. I recommend at least if you have no C++ experience, at least learn C++ for game development. That's the best starting point. Uh, and if you uh, have no Unreal Engine C++ experience, either take the Ultimate Game Developer course or the Ultimate Shooter course. Both of those are good preparation for this course. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Uh, it, was a, it was a pleasure uh, battling with all of you. Uh, I had a great time. And I will see you next time.